So basically a white blood cell or WBC will attack a pathogen. How does it do this? How does it even know how to do this? Well, the pathogen is sensed as a non-self creature or non-self um, fragment, okay? And this is because on your cells, you have what are called HLA or human leukocyte antigens that tell the white blood cells, hey, I'm part of the team. Think of it like a uniform in the military. So your HLA is like the team uniform or the military uniform, okay? And if you see someone in, in your same uniform, you're not supposed to shoot that guy. You're not supposed to have friendly fire, right? The problem is when the innate immune system gets messed up and all of a sudden we have all this friendly fire, you think of that as an autoimmune disorder, okay? More advanced recognition of different pathogens and different cells is when we bring in the adaptive immune system. This is your antibodies and whatnot. So over time, you develop the ability, every time you get infected with a virus, your body develops an antibody that will recognize certain proteins that are on that virus. So anytime the virus comes back, the adaptive immune system's turned on and you can attack that right away without engaging the whole learning process of the immune system again, okay? So the problem is when a pathogen antigen does not match a self antigen, okay? Then the white blood cell comes in and engulfs it, just like you see here. So it's not recognized, it attaches, it gets engulfed. And then inside the white blood cells are what are called exosomes or lysosomes. And these are little pouches filled with um, substances that allow an oxidative stress burst. Now, remember before I told you oxidative stress is terrible. Well, it is terrible in general if it's too much of it in your body over a long time. But in terms of attacking a virus and a bacteria, or some sort of damaged cell that shouldn't be there, or a tumor cell, you want your white blood cells to go in and drop the bomb of oxidative stress on that badness because it'll kill it. Then they clean up all that stuff, take it out, the macrophages come in, make it all pretty and excrete everything. Uh, the problem is when this stuff sticks around and then you start attacking yourself. So oxidative stress in these situations is actually really good and you really want it. So you want the ability to do it. You just don't want this to keep going on and on and on and on. So these are your different white blood cells, okay, that have been discovered over the years. And again, acute inflammation is not a bad thing. We want that. We want the ability to fight infection. We want the ability to clean up our skin after we have it cut or scraped or whatever. We want the ability to sense tumor cells or cancers and then attack them before they become big enough to become a problem, okay? Uh, so we want this. We want some level of inflammation. We just don't want chronic inflammation. So the injured site response is similar. The neutrophils or the white blood cells will come and enter the site of the injury. They have two functions. They'll protect you from pathogens, so they prevent that injured site from becoming um, infected or having a secondary infection of that. And then it'll clean up the damaged cells so that your body can come in and lay down new cells and heal. Um, but if you get a chronic wound, this means the neutrophils never really leave. Normally they're gobbled up by macrophages. It signals to the body, hey, we're done. We've cleaned up the site. The acute inflammatory phase is shut down and you enter into that remodeling and proliferative phase. But if you don't, then you're just constantly in this phase where you're dropping oxidative bombs and nothing's getting cleaned up, and then all these damage signals come out. And now we're going to talk about that. That's a conversion from acute to chronic inflammation. So this kind of shows you, this is a good uh, picture. The left side is normal skin um, at the microscopic level. And then the one next to that shows inflamed or infected skin with white blood cells populating the area and doing their thing. So neutrophils and wounds are actually different than neutrophils that are floating around in the plasma. Think of it like, again, I'm going to use military um, analogies. Think of it like your special ops team, right? Your special ops team, when they're hanging out, you know, on base, just doing whatever, playing cards and waiting, that is a different special ops team than the one that gets activated. You know, suddenly they're in a stress mode. Everything is serious. They're dead set. Their eyes on. They're, they've got all their uniform, their battle rattle. They're ready to go, as opposed to the special ops guys when they're playing cards or playing pool between deployments, right? So that it's still a neutrophil, but it's kind of a different neutrophil. It's ready to go. It's engaged. It's activated. So these promote angiogenesis or new blood flow to the area of injury or damage, stimulates growth of skin cells in this case. Fibroblasts are prolifer pro proliferate, and this is, you know, fiber literally is laid down, which then you can build, you can either add calcium to and make bone or 
keratinocytes, it makes skin, whatever. That's part of your remodeling and proliferative phase. And then you have expression of genes. And this is a real key. The neutrophils and the cytokines, the proteins they make, the whole function of those is, is to um, bring information and induce transformational changes at the genetic level. And that's when you start getting into trouble with uh, chronic inflammation. So basically, acute inflammation is activated innate immunity that then activates adaptive immunity. But this is supposed to be a very short-lived, like, here's your mission. You achieved your mission, you come home. This is, you don't want this to become a protracted long-term conflict, which is what happens with chronic inflammation. And this sort of shows you, now this is a weird little graph, but it's pretty good. Um, the numbers on the bottom on the x-axis are hours, and then the y-axis shows you the phases of inflammation, okay? So up to three days is that very early phase of dropping the bombs, cleaning things up, getting things like acute inflammation when you have the redness, the heat, the swelling, the pain, okay, about three days. There's overlap, of course, then you begin the remodeling, and then you begin the proliferative phase. Sorry, I got it back backwards. But anyway, you can see how this goes over time. Now, if you look, the, uh, the first two phases, phase one, phase two, or late phase one, that'll go to about that 10 day, 14 day point. I actually try to, for my post-surgical patients or people healing from an injury, I try to have them avoid anti-inflammatories if they can for those first week or two, because you, again, you want inflammation at that time, right? Um, you don't want to shut down the arachidonic acid uh, cascade too much because you need to get rid of the detritus or the debris and you need to kill the pathogens. Um, and then once you get out of that phase, then you don't want too much inflammation. So it's okay at that point. So once a neutrophil has served its purpose, it's engulfed the badness, it dropped the oxidative stress lysosome on it, cleaned up the debris, it is supposed to die at that point. It is programmed cell death, apoptosis. If it doesn't, if it just sits there and continues to produce bad proteins and continues to make these little lysosomes that then drop their stuff everywhere, that is chronic inflammation. Normally, a macrophage, which is a bigger kind of a phagocyte that comes in and phagocytizes or chews up and eats the neutrophil, Normally, the macrophage will come in and clean up the cleaner upper, if that makes sense. The neutrophils go in and clean up first, then the macrophage comes in and takes care of that. And when it does it, it signals to the body, hey, we're done with this acute phase of inflammation. Let's move on. Let's start rebuilding this tissue. If it doesn't, then you don't enter that next phase of healing, and that's when you have problems. You don't have the right phenotype or type of macrophage that will induce healing. You have this type of macrophage that is continually inflammatory. And that's what we don't want.